from the television studios of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. This is Ask Congress with Lester Wolf. In recent weeks, the controversy surrounding the arms deal with Iran has dominated most of the headlines. And here in Washington, it surely has been the number one news story. The attention paid to the whole Iran Gate uh, affair has tended to overshadow some of the major items uh, in other areas uh, that may be just as disturbing. Uh, recent figures have shown uh, that our economy is sluggish. In fact, uh, our economic growth is at its lowest point in, in years. What is the Congress doing to help get our economy back on track? And what can they do? The 100th Congress has been called uh, an historic one. Its place in history now may be judged by how it deals with domestic as well as foreign issues, however. With us today, we're very happy to have two very distinguished members of the Congress who will give us their thoughts on how best to address uh, our economic woes and our problems here at home. On my right, uh, and certainly not on, on the right, uh, but on my right uh, is Major Owens, a Democrat of New York's 12th District, member of the Government Operations uh, uh, Committee, and a member of the Education and Labor Committee. Seated next to him is uh, Congressman uh, Joe DiGuardi, uh, who is a member of the Government Operations uh, Committee and the, the Merchant Marine Committee. Gentlemen, uh, as I indicated in the opening, uh, so much attention is being paid uh, to foreign affairs and, and matters happening overseas. What's really happening here? Major Owens? Well, I think there's a great deal of concern about the issue of competitiveness and there are a number of hearings that are taking place now, a number of committee markups. Uh, it is uh, a comprehensive kind of activity here in Congress where it, almost every committee is involved in some way in getting that uh, competitiveness bill uh, prepared. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about the parts of the competitiveness issue which deal with education. In fact, I think that's the most vital part. It may not get the largest amount of, of funding, but uh, in the com complex uh, global economy that we're operating in now, uh, in the complex world that we're operating in now, the, the education of our population, uh, you know, education of everybody at every level. We need better trained technicians. We need better uh, trained people in the area of finance. Uh, we need better trained uh, engineers and, and uh, scientists. Uh, we also need people who are trained in languages, uh, the Japanese uh, uh, teach English from a very early age, and uh, most of their businessmen who come to this country are who uh, are aiming at the American market know uh, uh, English very well. They, they know not only the language, they know our idioms, they know our, our habits, our culture. That's one reason they do so very well in marketing in, in our uh, uh, market. Uh, we don't, on the other hand, uh, know very much about any other culture. Uh, we don't have very many linguists, certainly among businessmen, ling linguists among uh, businessmen. And, uh, you know, we ought to look at not only the competitiveness issue and the, the need for us to stay competitive on a global basis, but also in the larger area of the ideological long-term battle with the Soviet Union. Uh, the struggle there also requires that we have a population which has a, the best possible education, uh, the most people with the best possible education. And we're not investing heavily enough in education in order to meet these, these uh, short-term and long-term needs. And uh, I'm very concerned about that. Quite obvious that uh, uh, Congressman Owens is, is extremely interested in education and, and dedicated uh, to improving the lot of the average American. How about you, Joe? Well, I think uh, Major Owens used the right word uh, when referring to education as an investment. I think uh, too many times we lump all of our expenditures into one big pot, whether it's on a building or on drugs or on education. And we don't make the qualitative judgments that we should be making here in Congress. One of the reasons I think we need a capital budget is that we've got to start separating mentally the kinds of things that are investments in the budget process from the things that are the, uh, what we need to operate the government from day to day. And I agree with uh, Major that uh, education is an investment and uh, should not be held hostage to a budget, budget crisis. I feel the same way with the homeless and I feel the same way with the, the drug crisis. Uh, but. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it's not uh, easy to, to deal with the budget crisis that we, we have. Uh, I feel strongly also about competitiveness. Uh, uh, I'd like to characterize it as fair trade. I think that we need a global outlook and that we, we can't have protectionist legislation. But by the same token, we can't allow countries to uh, compete with us unfairly. And there are many countries that subsidize uh, industries that we don't. And we've seen examples of dumping in the past uh, where they've wiped out a major segment 
of, of our industry or of a particular industry. So I think that we've got to look at uh, the whole trade picture. Competitiveness, I think, is a good uh, way to refer to it because we've got to be more competitive. There's no doubt about that. The trade deficit is just too large. It's approaching $200 well, billion. Dollars. Well, what about being competitive at home? And I think this is important as well. And uh, what I'm talking about is the fact that uh, uh, we certainly must open up the markets uh, uh, of the world to our products. Uh, but by the same token, uh, there's a reason why the trade imbalances is where it is. Not only the fact that uh, uh, we are not uh, getting into those markets, but the fact that our people are buying those products. I mean, some of this is, is uh, in our own backyard. Uh, shoes, uh, for example, uh, uh, the cheap shoes that are coming in here. Uh, these shoes are going, uh, people are buying them. Well, the people are buying what is the best buy, the, the least expensive uh, shoes that uh, appear to be the best shoes will be purchased, no matter where they come from. The, the question is, uh, how did we get in a situation where we are not producing the best shoes at the lowest price? Uh, well, how, how did, and then how you have to happen? go back and look at... Uh, uh, management and, and, and our long-term uh, decision-making in terms of investments and, and machinery, etc. Uh, management is a key part of it. Our managers weren't very well trained. Uh, uh, our, our management uh, people have not had a global outlook, uh, not only in the area of shoes and some more commonplace type items, but uh, we pride ourselves on being the leaders in high tech, uh, the manufacturer of, of, of microchips and computers and a number of other areas, but uh, it appears that uh, certainly the Japanese are about to outdistance us uh, in those areas. So uh, when you look at the Japanese society as a whole, you'll find that they, they subsidize, Joe, in ways that we, don't, we haven't even begun to realize. We're very naive about subsidies. They subsidize heavily in the area of, of coordinating uh, their, their businesses. They subsidize by providing research and development services uh, or just things like translation services. You can get... English material, technical uh, briefs, and various English uh, documents translated very rapidly uh, in Japan at a very low cost. The average businessman, there's no equivalent service here. In yeah, yeah, we, do do have a, we, have an, we do in, have that. Intus has a, we have a National Technical Information Service, translation service. But we have a commerce much, department. Yeah, we have a commerce department that does slower. that type of thing, but American industry is not really into going to that, uh, to the Department of Commerce. And that's well, they, they, they use it, but it's, 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 it's not, not adequate enough. That's right. It doesn't yeah. move fast enough. Uh, they don't get them translated fast enough. And well, let's, let me tell you something else, just to follow up on this thought. The Japanese do something else much better than what we do. They save. When I became a congressman in 1985, in, in January, uh, our personal savings rate uh, per capita uh, was approximately 5.5 percent, I believe, almost 6 percent. Uh, that's now down to below 4%. Japan is still over 15 Now, if we're going to uh, be competitive, uh, one of the aspects is, is capital. The way you get money to invest in industry is from private savings, generally. We're not saving enough in this country. I took a big issue with the tax law. I wanted tax reform, and the tax reform bill uh, in 86 had a lot of good things. It took the working poor off the tax rolls. It got rates down. But it had some bad things, too. Uh, the fact that they could have uh, made a dent in individual retirement accounts, the fact they could have changed the rules on 401k plans, was going in the wrong direction. We sent the wrong signal to the public about the uh, savings and long-term planning. Uh, I think it's important for us to revisit those areas uh, of the tax bill. I think many of the retroactive provisions that were put in dealing with um, certain kinds of real estate investments, especially the low-income and the moderate income, uh, have to be re revisited. We may have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, so there are things that we've got to do here uh, where we do some long-range planning, some strategic thinking, which I don't believe we're doing enough of in order to be competitive and to deal with How the issue. How are we going to get by this, this present situation which we have? Uh, you talk about saving. We've got to save at the government level, too. That's part of the big problem that is involved here. And yet, uh, when you come down to it and look at what is being spent on education, and, and uh, look at what our debt servicing is cost us, uh, costing us, far more than we're putting into education. Well, if you look so we've the... greatly decreased the amount of money we've spent on it, spending on education yeah. as a percentage of the budget since the Reagan administration uh, began. The debt service now is greater. We're spending more to uh, pay interest on the debt than we're spending for education. Uh, that's a scandal, you know, and I, I think where <laughs> where the Japanese also have a great advantage is that they don't, we're paying for their defense. <laughs> they don't have uh, heavy investment in defense. 
So they put money in other areas, uh, and while we are heavily invested in things like Star Wars, uh, I think wastefully so, but uh, even if we needed Star Wars, even if it works, uh, who, who are the technicians who are going to maintain that? Who, who's going to manage it? Uh, uh, you know, we don't have the base, personnel base, to make these things work. What we found in the case of the shuttle trage tragedy was that uh, there were many people uh, who were suffering from fatigue. You know, they, those long countdowns, they had no backups. Uh, be, uh, so they, they, fatigue was always a problem that was hidden there. And I thought that was a scandal because to ha not have enough personnel uh, and have great investments in, 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 in hardware uh, jeopardizing as well as people's lives because you just don't have people to replace people is ridiculous. So we, we need us a pool of people that we can always draw from to keep these things going. Uh, Star Wars is going to be far more complicated than anything else. We are relying already too heavily on foreign scientists and foreign uh, technicians. Uh, you know, we took, we had to have Werner von Braun and who was an, a major in the SS to put the man, help us put a man on the moon. I hope we never get into another position like that where we have to depend on, on, on outside scientists to maintain a our our very expensive defensive system like, like Star Wars. So uh, the failure to invest in education while we are over-investing or investing too rapidly in, in a system like Star Wars is, is a misuse of the resources that we do have. Yes, I'd like to see the deficit gotten down, but uh, the place to get it down is to take a hard look at Star Wars and some of the uh, defense expenditures, which I think are far more accelerated and, and, and overblown than they should be. Well, I think we've got to make qualitative judgments in every area. It's not enough to say, what did we spend last year, and, uh, you know, increase it 2% or 5%, uh, or make across-the-board cuts. You wouldn't agree with that, and I wouldn't. We've got to do more qualitative thinking as to what we need, what we don't need, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, I've seen programs here which just don't work, uh, where the government gets in with direct loans, for instance, whether they're EDA loans or SBA loans. Uh, we find a default rate is very high because the government is not good at being a banker. Where we allow the banks to do it and then we guarantee those loans, it's much better. So I think we've got to look it's at... much better, Joe? Well, so we end up with a, an international situation where the banks are now find, trying to find a way for us to bail them out of the bad loans they made but all that, over the world. But those are foreign uh, They knew what they were doing. They're well, foreign, they're bigger. They're billion yeah. dollar loans well, instead of I can tell you this, I, a government operations major, they're now trying to sell the government loan, por loan portfolios and uh, they can't even get 50 cents on a dollar because whoever's managing the loans here are not keeping the paper trail so that people who buy these portfolios can now collect the loans. So I, I think that we've got to look at what the government does well and what it doesn't do well. But there's a basic... Uh, thing that uh, we have to look at today as well, Lester, and I mentioned it before. The U.S. government is still using the same Mickey Mouse accounting system we took New York City off of in 1975. It's the cash basis. It's the system that is absolutely a politician's dream because you can defer uh, expenses, you can accelerate uh, income. Look what we did, the smoke and mirrors on the, the last budget. We deferred one week's uh, payroll of the military. We're selling assets. You couldn't, in a private company or in a public company, excuse me, uh, sell assets and bring all the cash into the current P&L, but here we're selling assets to reduce the current deficit, not the national debt. And we have $2.2 trillion in national debt. What I'm saying is, we are disguising economic reality. If you think it's bad, it's much worse than what you think, because off the books right now are accrued pensions for the military, civil service pensions, Social Security is not funded. I mean, that's a joke. Uh, there's a separate tax called the Social Security tax, but we have something here called the uh, unified budget where they offset the, the deficit against the cash and Social Security and the highway trust funds. So when they tell you about the $200 billion deficit, that's already the, but the good news. We, so know, we've this got to has do been something. going on for a long time. It's got Why? to change, Lester, because well, if we, we can't really figure out where we're going unless we know where we've, where we've been. And I have a feeling that uh, many people in Congress, uh, well, many don't have my private sector background, don't understand that we're literally keeping uh, about half of what we do off the books because we're on this cash basis system. We're not recording our commitments, whether they're accounts payable, guarantees, contingencies, and yet these are true obligations that will have to be paid by our kids in the future. So I have a bill that I'm reintroducing this year called the um, Federal Financial Management Reform Act, and a number of Democrats are on it already. Uh, and I'd like for Major Owens to consider it, too. Sure, Joe, I'll Calling get for on chief it. financial uh, officer in government it's, it's because great. we need a quarterback. It's great to have an honest accountant like Joe, and I, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know why he doesn't switch his party because you, <laughs> you said these things have been going on for a long time, but uh, they have been never as bad as they are now. Uh, they accelerated uh, this kind of bookkeeping under Ronald Reagan because they just stopped 
taken in enough revenue. We've been fooling the American people. Uh, the big uh, injury uh, done by the tax bill is that uh, we cut the rate for the very rich a great deal. Uh, we didn't face up the reality that we need more revenue. Uh, without hurting anybody that much, we could have higher rates uh, in terms of the amount of money that the rate for the rich and the rate, rates for the corporations, and we could uh, balance off this, this revenue stream. The biggest problem is we've just not taken enough revenue. At the same time, we insist on these gigantic uh, defense expenditures. We've been talking to Congressman Major Owens of Brooklyn and Congressman Joseph DeGuardi of, of Westchester. Uh, we've been talking about the whole question of, of uh, uh, where we're going here domestically and, and what some of our faults are. Now, the question is, what are the solutions? Uh, how can we turn this thing around? Well, I'd say one thing, just to respond to what was said before. I, I can't uh, in any way condone raising taxes at this time. I know Major Owens would disagree with me because I have not seen enough done to eliminate the waste that I've seen in government. We haven't done anything, really, with the Grace Commission report. Uh, we haven't uh, really looked under the numbers to see uh, where the money's going. And I see a lot of structural, systemic mismanagement and waste that has to be dealt with. I'm afraid, Major, that if we bring new revenues to Washington, that uh, the lack of discipline that I've witnessed will just have these money spent on other programs and not to reduce the, the deficit. Right now, the pressure's on. Uh, Graham Rudman uh, is working. Even Tip O'Neill last year said that without it, we would have had a much higher budget deficit. Uh, it's maybe not the best answer, but uh, for lack of a, a, a better answer right now, I think we've got to stay on the target which says, hey, let's try to reduce these deficits over a five-year period, about 20 percent a year, uh, because if we don't, by 1991 and 1992, the estimate is, uh, Lester, that uh, uh, interest on the national debt, just the interest alone, will be about 40 cents of every dollar. That's and the legacy of the Reagan administration. You know, Graham Rudman uh, is not helping the situation, in my opinion, because it's, it's preventing us from making decisions that ought to be made, the hard decisions. We are threatening national security in the long run by continuing to fail to make the investment in human resources uh, that we need to make. Uh, it's no joke. Uh, that we are spending less now on education than we're spending uh, to finance the national debt. You know, that's no joke. Uh, time is going by, and sometimes you can't measure these things by just looking internally. Let's compare the, the percentage of our, our budget that we're spending on education with the percentage that the Japanese are spending. Uh, let's look at the number of, of scientists and engineers that are being produced in Japan. Let's look at the number of scientists and engineers and technicians that are being produced in the Soviet Union, and linguists also. Uh, let, let us look at what modern governments uh, that we are going to have to compete with in order to survive in some cases, in order to survive commercially in others, uh, what they are doing, what, they're invest what their investment in their human resources are at this moment. And we'll see how far behind we're getting. If we need more revenue, we should get more revenue for that. And I don't think we need more revenue. I think we need to reduce some of the wasteful defense expenditures that we're doing. Well, uh, many experts agree that we can take care of our, meet our needs in defense without having to spend the kind of money we're spending on such pie-in-the-sky uh, weapons as Star Wars. Major, uh, one of the aspects of, of this is you indicate on the reduction of expenditures, and I think that uh, obviously you, you have a very strong case. But uh, defense is not the only area. I mean, you take the the oh, yeah, there, the, there, the, the food area, there are other the, areas. the aid to to agriculture today. Now we need the small farmer. That's certainly true, but by the same token, what is it now? I think twenty three billion or twenty five billion dollars that we're pay, paying it's people not to produce food when they are hungry people, not only in the world but in our own country. We're, not, we're also paying them to keep prices up so that our urban constituents are paying more for food. Uh, in order well, to, how do we to reconcile maintain something like that. Uh, they're that's paying why. twice. As taxpayers, they pay for the yeah. subsidies and they also pay higher prices. Well, we, we need some strategic thinking in that area. We should be in Congress bringing the farm economy into the real world of free enterprise. Uh, we've meddled with it for so long that it's almost impossible now to, to, uh, to deal with it. Uh, and every year it costs us more and more and more. Uh, I mean, I sit here in Congress setting price limits on things like sugar, and as the Major said, uh, uh, we, uh, w sugar we can buy from some countries for five cents a pound, but now we've raised it to 20 cents here because we're protecting certain farmers here. And uh, many of these countries in South America, that's all they can do is grow sugar to pay us back the debts that they owe us. So I'm saying to myself, where is the overview kind of thinking that we need uh, to, let's say, strengthen Central and South America through trade? 
but then again, we, we have a, a font policy that kind of goes against that. So I think a lot better thinking has to be done as to where we're going in important areas like this, because the costs are getting uh, uh, just to be too great. We, we also have to lay aside the primary uh, drumbeat of this administration, and that is greed. You know, they made it possible for the rich to get richer, and they really have not addressed themselves to the fact that uh, we have all of these problems. And, and I still say that there are people and corporations that can afford to pay more taxes, and it would not hurt that much. Uh, we could put some taxes on uh, imported oil. There are a number of things that we need to do. What but about, about, about value-added value tax? Many of the countries of the world have, have this. Uh, Let me just say something about imported oil, because that would raise the cost of, uh, of uh, heat in our area, and I think that would yeah, be a wrong answer. I was being a so profile be, encourage. Uh, <laughs> we we got to be very careful about that. I was taking that. a national viewpoint. <laughs> I think maybe right. we still need it, Joe. Well, let let right. me get back to that, that question of, of a value-added tax, uh, which many of the countries uh, of the world have. Uh, we don't have anything like that. It's regressive. Uh, it's, it's a national sales tax, and it'll hit the people hardest who can afford to pay uh, the least. There's nothing... Uh, about a value added tax. Well, how, how is it we can have a, a local sales tax and we can't have a national sales tax? Well, I don't think that we can replace the current tax system with a value added tax, but I think we should study it because it is working uh, in, the, uh, in other countries in Europe and they can use it as a tool for trade because they can exempt then uh, exports from it. Uh, but I agree with the major, it can't be made to be regressive. What we'd have to do if we seriously considered it, we'd have to be sure that uh, items such as food, education, and other basics were removed from the tax base uh, so that it would not be a regressive Why don't tax. Why we have luxury taxes again? Well, well uh, I'm, not, I'm no I, longer in the Congress. You <laughs> fellas are. Don't ask me. <laughs> well, you know, we, you made a point before about uh, increasing the taxes for what you consider to be the, the wealthier people. Don't forget the tax law that was passed uh, also eliminated many, many deductions so that if you did not keep faith with what we did last year, which is to reduce the top rate from 38 to, uh, to 28, 28 and a half, uh, you'd be taxing these people at more of a rate effectively than they would have had even before tax reform, and that's not right. Uh, I think that, uh, and when it comes to that class of people, you have to consider what Peter Grace said, uh, Major. He said, if you say that anyone who makes over $75,000 a year is rich, and that now includes congressmen, uh, if you tax them 100% on everything over $75,000, you'd have enough money to run the government for seven days. We don't collect the taxes at the top. We collect it really basically in the middle because that's where the people are. So I, I just had to comment on that. That's where the power, the power is at the top, so we don't collect as much well, at the top. No, not do. really. But you you got to collect from everybody. The people who have benefited the most from our new global market and our global economy, the people who are benefiting from the fact that, that we're in this global market are not the people on the bottom in the manufacturing industries who are losing their jobs. They're the people at the very top in the finance and the legal uh, services, the, 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 the high-tech world. They, they are the ones benefiting greatly. They, they, their, their profit, uh, their income is, is, is increasing uh, exponentially. It, it, it's doubling and, at, and tripling. So they're not hurting at all. That's where we should okay. aim the taxes. But look, you at, know? look at the good news, though. We're in an expansion that's good right news. now, an expansion that's lasted, uh, I think, now over five years. Uh, we've put more people to work in the last five years than we have probably any period since the uh, end of World War II. And, and Interest rates have come down service from jobs making less Inflation than was 15, it's now below so 7 8, that a year. Lot. Yeah. But, but the point the is... The increasing number of jobs is not significant at all in terms of, uh, of families with two people working, in many cases making less now than they made uh, when only one person was working in a manufacturing job. Those manufacturing jobs have gone overseas. But the question and is, we, we have There's invested, no uh, the people who benefit from that. They're investing overseas. They're getting the profits. The finance uh, service industries are getting the profits. Uh, the advertisers, the whole groups of people who are, who are living but, well in the global but, economy, they should be the ones who, who are pay, uh, pay more taxes. Coming back to it, aren't the people living better? Aren't people, people are not living people better have, in general. People well, have VCRs. They have television sets today. Debt. They have two cars. Uh, We're in a situation now where, for the first time, uh, the parents cannot, the, the children cannot look forward to living better than their, their, their parents. Uh, in fact, it's just the opposite. Uh, the next generation is, is the looking deficit. toward living, uh, you know, with a living standard which is lower than, than the ones that we have now. Uh, that, that, that there's ample evidence to support well, that. At society, uh, certainly the federal government has to be sure that those who fall through the safety net are taken care of. The problem we have with the homeless, uh, I'm uh, reintroducing a bill 
on the homeless. Uh, last year it was for $300 million. This year I'm reintroducing a bill for $750, uh, very similar to the one that was passed last week, but it has a longer view than just shoveling the money at it in one year, because I believe that's an area where we must help people. I think but, that's very generous of you, Joe, and I support that 100%, but the reality is that we need uh, some support from your side of the aisle and from all over for a housing program which provides housing for people. The homeless wouldn't be homeless if they had housing. We need more public housing. We need more uh, subsidized housing of a variety uh, of, of uh, experimental approaches like the Nehemiah houses in my district. I agree with or that. Or the Section 8 housing. Uh, you know, we, we have not spent any significant amount of money on housing uh, uh, since this administration came to power. And that's part of the reason 